Hello, let us prepare for this Sunday. Why do you worry? That is the topic and title for this week's Sunday School lesson. And so you know what time it is around here. We're going to get ready to prepare you for this week's Sunday School lesson, Lord's will. Word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this lesson. And Lord, forgive us for worrying and, and being short of the glory in this area, God. Lord, we're asking that you rise up on the inside of us and help us to grow and change in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, as I sit down and take my seat lord i ask you to rise up and teach your people let them hear the word that comes straight from you in the name of jesus and lord bless each and every teacher and student to become more like you and us all to become more hearers and doers of your word in jesus name amen all right so excited about this word because it's asking a question but in this sunday school lesson we're going to start looking at how jesus is concluding his conclusion of the matter is god's gonna take care of it all and this is your sunday school session for june 26 of 20 i mean june 6 of 2021 i'm sorry i'm getting ahead of myself i'm excited y'all all right so and then it's coming out of the book of matthew chapter 6 verse 25 through 35 all right so let's hop right into the bible truth jesus assures his followers my god this the, the word assures gives me comfort in just reading this here he assures his followers us that are following his footsteps or and, and following him and doing the the things that he asks us to do in the word and lining up with the word of god he assures us that God will meet their needs, meet our needs. Say it. It sounds so good to, to just hear it. God's going to meet our needs. All right. So you know how we do it around here. If you are new, welcome. And you are welcome to share the word of God with us anytime. Now, do us a favor. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And hit a thumbs up and drop a comment below and on facebook please hit that follow button if you're not already following us here on kingdom minded thinkers it's to get you to start thinking christ-minded so that you can walk on water amen all right so you know how we do it around here as well when it comes to uh getting right into this thing diving into the word we go over each section inside the sunday school lesson breaking it down and talking about it with you getting you excited and ready for this sunday and uh <laughs> teaching in the sunday school amen lord's will all right so in the introduction da 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 here we go so in the book of matthew it talks about and it says in matthew 6 is a it's a continuation it's like okay this is okay we've already gotten started but let's keep on it's a continuation of the sermon on the mount uh of jesus birth and his royal ancestry so you're looking at about chapter one of this and then and, it, and then it talks about the wise men and that's where chapter one and, and, and we're we following with that and then it talks about um the wise men uh, and, and the holy family that escapes from Africa's land of Egypt. Uh, King Herod uh, threatens to kill the child in chap about chapter 2. So we know about this story. This is like his birth all the way up. Letting you know the things that occurred. Because um, we need that build up to, to, to that starting point or that stopping point sometimes we got to go back and refresh on things that we've already known and sometimes some people just don't know because they we, we still getting children turning over and coming into into christ every day and so we gotta make sure that we don't leave them out amen so 
Just remember that. All right. So when uh, we look at chapter about chapter two, a voice, uh, we it talks about uh, a voice that prepares a way for Jesus. That's about that's chapter three. So who is that voice? I'm glad you asked. It is John the Baptist. And he goes around telling everybody he's paving the way. He's the forerunner for Jesus Christ. And so this is building you up to get you to the point of where we're going to get to here in just a little bit. But this is all in the introduction. This is introducing you. So now that we are um, getting our feet wet a little bit, let's go about chapter four. It talks about the details of the temptations of Jesus during his 40 day fast. We know that the devil uh, told him to turn a uh, stone into bread, um, you know, and trying to get him to jump off of a cliff, you know, and these are like temptations, but Jesus speaks to him and he resists him and he does what? Flee. Amen. So this is what the introduction, this is simply the introduction. Don't be afraid of it. Uh, just, just, just embrace what you are captivating and recapturing. If you already know this, oh my goodness. And it is life again. You begin to feel this again. All right. So let's get right into it. Well, now we're up to the part where we end this lesson. All right. So now don't worry. Chapter uh, six of Matthew, verse 25 through 30. Everybody there. All right. So follow along with your scriptures and please read your scriptures because uh, I read on my own time and we want to make sure we have enough time to explain the text to you. Um, I will try to get faster at it and incorporate a scripture somehow or even at least tell you where the verses are where we are to break this down at some point we are working on this i am all right so just be praying for me don't worry about the necessities of food and clothes now when you hear this i see so many individuals that are caught up in life on what they wear their clothes makes them and some people are just worry about food what i'm gonna eat what i'm gonna eat what am i gonna eat what am i gonna eat and it's an all-time thing and that's just their concern that's what they mainly worry about what am i gonna wear what am i gonna eat but i'm telling you this is gonna break that cycle this is gonna change your your, your thinking which puts a shift in the atmosphere so don't worry about these necessities we know you need clothes we know you need food god knows these things as well but jesus counsels because your heavenly father hallelujah somebody just point up your heavenly father knows what you need god knows what you need before you ask him yes he does and he's because he's all powerful. He knows all, sees all. He ain't sleep on the job. God knows that you have need of these things. Jesus counsels and tells that. And he leaves it in the scripture and he counsels with us now. Somebody say, how? When you read it, he's counseling with you. And he's letting you know, God, your heavenly father, knows what you need. Trust your wise and all knowing heavenly father. He's telling you, this is your instruction. Trust him. Put your faith and trust in God because he knows what you need. And he's a great father. He's a great provider. Words can't even describe him, but Jesus has given you instructions on today. My friends trust God. Trust our heavenly father. Trust the, your, your wise, our wise and all knowing, all loving heavenly father. Be comforted by this counsel from Jesus. I just told you this comforts me because this gives me that assurance and you that are in Christ, you should be feeling reassured right about now. I don't care what storm you are in or what storm you just come out of or that you're halfway out of. You should feel the reassurance right about now. And if you don't feel that reassurance, that's okay. We can get you there because by the end of this lesson, you're going to feel that reassurance. I pray that you do. And I loose that up on you now because we are surely in that time where we need reassurance. All the T I N. Me. And that's what God is wanting us to feel. Now, if you're not in Christ, this is a great day because this is the day 
that the Lord has made. And this is a great day for you to give your life to Christ. Romans 10 and 9. All right. So looking at what we're talking about here, don't worry. Jesus, look, he wants us to be comforted by this counsel. This, this brings, then look, God left the comforter here for uh, Jesus when he came and when he went back to be with the father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And he's now sitting with him in glory. He left us a gift, his comforter, and that's Holy Spirit. All right, so by worrying, you cannot add one single hour to your life. So what does worrying get you? Oh, my friends, worrying gets you absolutely nothing. And in the Sunday school lesson, we need to make sure we point that out, especially to the newcomers and remind the ones that's going through storms and let them know God is here. I am here with you because I'm praying for you. I know who to go to and worrying about this thing. It's not going to get you anywhere. It's just like rocking back and forth in a boat without a sail. There is no direction. It's just going wherever the wind goes. And there is no good result because it's just back and forth. No goodness is coming out of that. You're not getting from point A to point B. Why? Because you're just back and forth. Wavery. So that's what worrying does. And it costs a lot of other things. And we will get to that. All right. So, and you can't add, look. If you think about it, you can't turn your hair gray. Well, you can with dyeing it, but I'm talking about like a natural thing, like what God can do. Like he can turn your hair gray and it's literally gray without any chemicals on it. So, but looking at, you can't do anything. You can't even add an hour to your life with worrying. You're going to take from your life. So worrying, we want you to start looking at that as a bad thing. I've heard someone say, well, he's just a worrier. No, he's not just a worrier. He can change. She can change. All right. And so we do change by letting people know in ourselves and believing what we read from the word of God and what we hear. And having that faith that God will supply all these needs just as he provides life itself. Now, look, God is the creator of everything and he provides everything for everything. The birds have food. The flowers have the, 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 the soil that it needs to grow. The animals, all the animals are fed. Come on. God provides all these things. And just as he provides life itself, you, my friend, are very important and God loves you and he's going to provide for you as well. One, the first thing we must do is trust God. And when we trust him, that means we have faith in him. Then we're going to start noticing the things that he do, the things that he's done, the things that he's doing and he is going to do. And we thank him in advance for doing it for us. And when we thank him for doing it for us, we know that God's not going to release anything to us. That's going to harm us. Come on, somebody praise God. God wants you to have nothing but the best. And if he closed the door, it's because it's not meant. Thank him anyway. Therefore, Jesus distinguished real from the fake. It talks about that in the scripture text. We're going to talk about that for just a little bit here for just a second. I got uh, maybe 60 seconds before we move on. Now, Jesus, when it talks about that uh, in the Sunday school text, when he looking at the real from the fakes, it's talking about the characteristics of an individual getting up and praying for the applause for, uh, of others, changing characteristics, become this person in front of others. But when it's the doors are closed, you're something else. You're something totally different, but you're working for the applaud of others and you want them to see you in a mighty way and you want it to be in such an uproar and it's not about God. It's all about you. And Jesus speaks totally against that. You got to be meek, humble, and real. All right. So he talks about being the hypocrites. You'll see that in your Sunday school, uh, text and don't have sincere worship. Jesus is telling you to trust God and you got to be sincere with him. You got to have sincere worship. Don't be like the hypocrites. All right. So don't be like the hypocrites who act and put on a show of, of prayer uh, and pray in front of others, changing characters to get the applause. Jesus teaches about the proper relationship to have when it comes to money and possession. Let's park it right there. Er, 
Just a moment, because when he teaches about the proper relationship to have with money and possession, we know we need materialistic things, but you don't make that your God. And he wants you to look at it in a sense that it's just the materials. And when you looking at the materials, they can take wings, baby, and fly away. And when the wings fly away from the materials, look, everything is going to turn back to the dust. Say it with me and think it. Everything is going to rust and turn back to the dust but there is one thing that's eternal that you have and you possess and that's you and when you go back to meet your maker which is God are you going to be in eternal paradise or eternal torment and damnation so that's why we got to start thinking and focusing on what's really important you got to wake up spiritually and know that yes we like things yes we need money as a um a way to uh, survive because we, we pay for things, you know, it's, it's commerce. But and we do possess things and God wants us to have nice things. Jesus doesn't speak against you having anything nice, but it is a problem when you put these things before God. We got to put God over everything because without him, the things that we have, it won't last long. You want God's favor, his blessings on things in your life. You don't want to get something and then don't have the favor of God. Cause it's not going to last long. Trust me. I know. All right. So having that viewpoint in the right relationship, God, and then place things as it, as it needs to go in those categories. Jesus wants you to have that mindset so that life will become easy for you. I hope you got your pen and paper and you're ready because these things if you didn't already know it, and if, even if you do know it, sometimes it's just good to make a little note. So, because when you write it, it becomes like a tablet on the heart, and you begin to remember what you've heard, what you've learned, and what you're looking at. All right, y'all having fun? I, look, I am. All right, so the moths will eat up your clothes, and thieves will take your valuables. These are useless treasures. Why does he call it useless treasures? Because it is not what's important. What's important is your soul. And this is why the enemy attacks you as much as he does. Because you have a chance. You have an opportunity to make it into heaven. He doesn't. And he wants to steal what's more valuable than money. What's more valuable than than more valuable than possessions of, of, of materialistic things. That is your soul. That is you. And so the devil knows that question is, do you know it? And my friends on today, if you didn't, let me break it down to you and let me help you. You are so valuable. You are so important. And God loves you. You are God's pleasure. Amen. Somebody. All right. So now those things are useless, but it didn't say you wasn't. So that gives you, are you seeing where we're going with this here? What's more valuable and God is value. You know, we got to have God in everything. Okay. So spiritual, spiritually healthy, uh, a spiritually healthy person, uh, sees clear. I mean, you know, like, it's just like somebody that, that without their glasses, they just can't see it all. But a person is spiritually healthy. You see clear and choose God over everything because you know where your help come from. Hallelujah. I look to the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, you know, cause we look to God for everything. We find favor in God. We find life in God cause there's life in the word. Amen. And, and this is what we are here to do and to show others the way because you don't have to suffer and, and be in, in a position and stay stuck there. God is a delivering God. God is a supplier. He don't just supply materialistic things, but he supplies all your needs. I smile when I say that because God has been good to me. God has been good to me. If he's been good to you, can I get an amen? I know he has. And some, and if you can't think of nothing that he's done for you, that if you can hear this teaching, then God has been good to you. Sometimes you go through a storm, honey, but as long as God is with you, you can get through that storm. And on the other side comes elevation. Mm. Thank you, Jesus, my God. Mm. 
back to it. Jesus cautions against anxiety and worry. Why is that? Because he knows this is going to stunt your growth. And when your mind is focused on anxiety and worry, you can't focus on what God can, will, and is going to do. And you know, when you are in worry mode and you waving back and forth, the scripture tells us that that person can't expect to receive anything from God. Why? Because you're back and forth. You're unstable and an unstable man is double minded. And it could be a woman as well. And so you're unstable in all your ways. One day God's going to do it. One day, child, I don't know. And then one day, well, I got faith that God's going to take care of this. And then you want to try to help God when he didn't tell you to help him in that way. Because God do give us things to do, but he didn't give it to you to do it that way, some of you. You know, and so we got to be ordered. Our steps, every step ordered by God. My goodness. So worrying and anxiety causes a problem it hinders your faith it stops you it blocks what god is trying to do so worrying and anxiety is something that you don't need and if you got it just put it in the trash can right now write it down and say this is all my worry in the trash you go and then write anxiety on the paper this is all my anxiety in the trash you go and put the lid on it because god is our supplier. He's going to take care of you. He's going to take care of your needs because he loves you. Are you in obedience is the question. And we can't get around that. We got to be in God's hallelujah, his care 24 seven. Yes. But you got to be walking in obedience, obedience. So why is that? That's because of what I just explained to you. God knows Jesus knows it's going to stunt your growth with God. So take no thought people take no thought. For, to, for for the morrow. Somebody said for tomorrow, which, you know, you could technically say that. But for the morrow is what the scripture text talks about. Amen. It's, and, and when it says take no thought in emphasis, it says don't fret. Don't be anxious. Praise God. Don't because these things and don't worry because these things are totally against God. You we cannot please God. When, when, when we don't have faith, it pleases God. When we have faith, oh, ye of little faith, we got to have total faith in God. And see, that's what we have to teach our students and teachers for us to remember. And for us, it's, you know, we can go back to the, the, the drawing board and learn a little bit too. having faith pleases God. It moves mountains. Faith is an action word. You got to be doing something and you get so excited. I got faith just like a little kid. When mama told the little son, I'm just paraphrasing, let's see, mm, let me use this. When I tell my kids I'm finna do something, especially if it's something that they really, really, really want to do, they get so excited. They got faith. I ain't done it yet, but they know I'm going to do it. So they get so excited. Ooh, mama's going to do this. And they're going to keep bringing it up. And some of them, they keep throwing hints out until it's done because they'll say, mama, and when, when this happened, they, they, they'll even come show me something like, ooh, I can't wait till I get my cell phone. I can't wait till this and that because they know it's coming. They just don't know when they got faith that I'm going to take care of them because I made a response, a commitment to them and being responsible to supply their needs. That's what a mother does. That's what a father does. And our father, God supplies all our needs. He's made a commitment. Have you committed yourself to God? Have you made that commitment to say, God, I'll be your child. Will you be my father? Supply all my needs. God shows up for us. You got to show up for him. It's time for you to show up for him and do what the word of God says. Whew. Let me, um, let me, let me try to stay focused here because all that's on there. And let me share this nugget with y'all as well. And I'm gonna have to do a teaching on this. This is for free. All this for free anyway. But anyway, okay. So in my notes, I got when Jesus was doing the healing and cause it talks about this in the Sunday school text, he was spreading in and, and, and the news spread it everywhere his works because when it, it was talking about that in the first half of the sunday school lesson it just spread it and as they began to follow him because they followed the anointing they followed the healing they followed what he was doing my goodness can you just wrap your mind around people just following him so he goes up in the mountaintop mm. 
when I hear the word going up, I think of elevation. So when he goes up to the mountaintops, the, the, the disciples, his followers, they have to do something. They have to climb the mountain to get to where he is. And I want you to take this and write it down. Let it meditate. Let it marinate in your soul. When you go up, you following Christ, you got to go up. So when these disciples go up, Jesus sits down and teaches them. And while I, when I got to this scripture, well, when I got to this part of the text, Holy Spirit said, when you are in a high place with God, it's time to sit down and be taught. That's the place for you to learn. You sit down and you learn. You look all around. You observe. You, you're still constantly listening. Because as long as you're growing, you're always being constantly fed. You're being constantly taught. That's the best time for you to sit down and be taught. Every day is a teachable moment. And so while they up in a high place with our Savior, they sit down and are being taught. Woo. All right, so... Is not your life worth more than meat and clothes? This is the question that is asked. Yes, your life is worth more than meat and clothes. Jesus changes the way of thinking. He changes your way of thinking. He urges uh, for you to, uh, re he urges rather than you being anxious to think of the birds uh, and think of the things that God is taking care of that, that, that is naturally here that don't have to do anything. He changes, he puts a, a, a shift, a turn on your mind. He said, rather than thinking of your problem and clothes and, and the value of what you think that you, that's right, that's going on now, Think of the birds. Think of what God does when he feeds the bird. And God will send manna down just to feed the birds. What do you think he'll do for you? So what does worry and stress do, I mean, and anxiety do to someone's health? It can and will kill you. It's not good to do that. For one, your blood pressure goes up. For two, it causes imbalance. And everything about you, if, you, if your blood pressure is up, it starts making you have headaches. I mean, it's a chain reaction of things. And God doesn't want you to be physically unhealthy. He wants you to be spiritually, physically, and all of you to be well put together in holiness. Amen. Okay, so Jesus, ooh, let me hurry and wrap this up. This was so good. I am excited about this because this... This word is light. It's a life to us. It's a lamp unto our feet. God will supply. Move to that section with me real quick. Come on, we're going somewhere. God will supply. Jesus is not saying to be lazy and don't work because somebody might get this twisted. So they, 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 they covered this in the Sunday school text because remember I said faith is an action word. You got to be doing something. You got to work. You got to step out on faith. You got to do what God told you to do. If he told you to go and anoint that building that, that, that he desired, that you desired to have and to go there seven days, just like he told him. And, uh, uh, what, oh, there's another story that could tie to that, that, that be an example. The wall of Jericho, when they marched around, if God told you to go to that building and march around 10 times, 11 times, whatever number, and he told you that that would be yours, get up and move and be, do an act of faith. Also, he said, clean up your credit. Don't owe no man nothing but to love him. Get up and do your job. Start paying off your debt. Come on, it's an action word. Jesus is not saying be lazy and don't work. Once birds mature, because, you know, when you come in, you get to learn about Jesus. Once you mature, you don't wait for somebody to come drop the food in your mouth. You get up and open that Bible yourself. You get up and speak the word of God to yourself. Minister to yourself. Speak life to yourself. Amen. And life in the word. God will supply your daily bread. You must do your part as well. See uh, the Lord's prayer. And that's in Matthew 6, 11. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, God, our daily bread. 
And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. What a beautiful way to start your prayer off and teach it to your children. And I've got to get better at trying to, you know, getting back in there with them to, to get them to learn it. Because this is something that can't be forgotten. My grandma taught it to me and kept in repetitiveness. And so I got to teach it to them. All right. So when your goal is accumulate, uh, 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 oh, to, to get wealth, that's meaningless. Chase God. He gives eternal rewards. Uh, earthly treasures with no favor from God uh, and being first place is going to take wings and fly away. I'm just telling you, if you want to know what's wrong, start evaluating you. Loving God first will bring all these things. He said, ooh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Hmm. You know what? Blessings will overtake you. They will run and jump on you. Trust me. I know because they, how the, thank you, Jesus. They taught it to me and I started living a righteous lifestyle. Who are they? My spiritual parents. And when they taught it to me, I, I started living right. And I started beginning to see that the blessings will overtake you. They'll run and jump on you. You know, they'll come find you. Blessings will do that. Amen. Cause God will send them to you again. Don't you worry. Go to that section real quickly. Consider to examine or note. Consider. That's what it's talking about. To examine or note carefully the flowers of the field, how they grow. And they don't do nothing to grow, but God takes care of that. Okay. And so they don't work or toil or earn money or spend or make clothes. They rely solely on God. That's what God wants you to do. Now you do have to do something because we are humans and he made us in his image. And what a great day it is to be a human that's any day and every day excited okay so and these were the flowers that were considered grass but not planted and kept by a gardener now y'all got to look at that real quick if just any old flower that's just growing anywhere and a gardener is not tending to it but only god is tending to it because you know god got the gardener tending to him but one that's just out there and god is tending to it God will take care of you since God takes care of the flowers, which have no lasting value in, and, and it's going to be gone to be burned up. Shall he not much more clothe you? So y'all can't be worried about clothes. You can't be worried about things of this world. You got to indeed be trusting God. Jesus always illustrates that to his listeners, uh, uh, things around and use parables so that they could understand. So he sat down to teach them and use the environment around him to do his teaching and which was his whiteboard. So don't worry. Jesus concludes that God takes great care of his creation and can be trusted. There is no need to worry. Worrying is the mark of the Gentiles. This was an example that they used. And then, you know, cause the relationship that they had with God was not a good relationship. They were unbelievers. They did not trust God. They had no trust in God. And so therefore there was no relationship with God. And so when you don't trust God, that's exactly how you look like the Gentiles. God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. And he owns everything. All right. So God is a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Hallelujah. Light in the darkness. My God, that's who you are. So I like this song, but I have to include that in here a little bit. So don't add double trouble by adding the cares and the worries of tomorrow to the worries of today. Tomorrow's got enough troubles. This the text talks about that God will provide and the grace is going to be renewed and more grace and new grace is going to be restored unto you to for tomorrow. If there be a tomorrow, amen. So only focus on the things that is of today. Focus on what God is doing right now. Now you do have to prepare and ask God to bless you when you're trying to do something in the future. Don't, don't take that out of context. But what God wants you to do is trust him. If God provided food for you for today, he's going to provide food for you for tomorrow. If he paid that light bill last month, he's going to pay that light bill this month. If God made a way and opened the door for you to get that job, he's going to open another door for you to get a house. Come on, somebody. God loves you. And I do too. All right. So... And he will see you through. Just trust God. Oh, he's so good. 
He's so wonderful and awesome. Line yourself up with him. Make sure you're paying your tithes, giving your offering. Make sure that you're in church. Make sure you're following that Bible concept, every line of it. Amen. And know that God is with you. He's for you. He'll never leave his children. Amen. Somebody, even in a test, when you think he's not there, he's there. I love each and every one of you. I wish I had more time. I really do. I really wish I had more time because I could go on and on about this text here because God has truly been good to me. And don't worry. Trust God. And y'all know what time it is. And, and we'll see you guys next time. Lord's will. Bye-bye.